過ぎた季節が嘘だとしても重ねた憎もりは嘘じゃない君が残した背中の傷はとは今もずっと甘くてだからずっと痛くて Yo, what did you guys? It is your boy, Leon Muki here, back with you with another new chapter of Team Valor. And sorry it's been a while since I, well, last posted a chapter on this series. The reason being is, well, as I said before, this isn't going to be a main series that I'm going to be focusing on, unlike, other sto- unlike the other stories I do on this channel. However, the other reason why is because of the shit that Rooster Teeth has been involved with, after all. And honestly, I'm kind of worried for what Ru- on what Ruby could be in the future. Especially since all their contracts with their animators have now completely run out, and I doubt there's going to be that of a volume 10 in the future. Also, let's just bring. I also want to bring up the fact that. Let's just say the Ruby community outside is still one of the most annoying communities having to deal with, to be fair. Hell, I had to delete so many goddamn negative, cha- negative well, comments on, my, on, the fir- on the first chapter. So, yeah, there was that as well. But even so, I still love Ruby. I still love the potential, and I still love the world and characters. Well, some of its characters. Especially on how that they were led to become what they are, to be honest. But at any rate, in, let's go for a little recap. The fir- everyone first arrived at Beacon Academy with our, ma- with, the four ma- with our four main characters and our newest four main characters as well. As many of them began to e- interact and meet with each other. As the entrance exam for Beacon Academy will begin soon after. So, with all that said, let's get into this, shall we, guys? Also, I got a lot of, well, requests for certain ships to happen. And let me bring this up. I put up a poll, I put up multiple polls on who should be with the main car- with the main cast of Team, of Team Valor. And I'm going to say this out right now. The f- Violet is shipped with John. Luger is shipped with Yang. Luke is shipped with Weiss. And Alfin is shipped with Blake. It's there and there you guys go. So stop asking. Chapter 2 Teams. As, every, as everyone who are ready for Beacon Academy actually had that of dinner before heading off to bed with everybody in the same. Basically, in the Galar Hall, basically sleeping together, with with Ruby writing in writing a letter to everybody at all her old friends at Signal Academy, with then Yang soon basically slam, slamming right next to Ruby, saying, "Come, man, this is awesome. It's like one big slumber party." With Ru- Ruby commenting, saying, "True, but however." I doubt Dad would approve of all the boys here. Within, Yang couldn't help but say, "I sure do." With then looking at many guys basically flexing, showing off their shirtless bodies and muscles and everything. Before then, John soon walking past, and that's of a onesie. With then Yang saying, "Okay, I'm, I'm no longer interested." With then soon Luger City. Basically, sitting right next to Ruby, saying, "True, true." However, I could agree, but I could disagree with other things. With then, Luger basically checking out many of the girls who are who are together as well. With then noticing that a Velvet, as her sleep as her sleepwear is basically leads to less of the imagination after all. As she just took off her battle clothes and all in basically in that of her corset and basically under boob, well, t-shirt, and also not wearing her rip, 
a rip well shorts as well and just wearing and just wearing her black panties after all with then soon saying but i have to say after five years of being away from being away from veil especially you two girls you guys have really grown especially you ruby gotta say in a year or so you can definitely be a knockout with then ruby basically blushing at luger's well compliment slash flirting with then yang basically slamming a pillow in his face saying hey stop stop flirting with my little sister do you want do you want do you really do want a, a fist in your mouth with then saying chill chill i'm only semi-joking with then ruby saying well at least i know that you're still you're still yourself luger still a pervert but also kind at the same time with then luger saying glad glad to be at service so, who are you writing letters to? With then Ruby saying, basically everybody, since I didn't really get to bring my friends here. With then looking at Yang, with then Yang saying, <laughs> I guess I still should apologize for ditching you, should I? With saying, yes! With then Yang saying, but hey, at least you made a friend. Or rather, two friends, Luger and John. And that Alfin guy that you talked about. With then Ruby saying, but then there's Weiss, who basically hates me. That's basically one that's one negative friend. With then Luger saying, oh, come on, Rubes. That's not a negative friend. You basically made two new friends, met up with an old friend, and basically made one enemy. That's actually pretty good on your first day. With then Ruby basically slamming her face down on our pillow. And also into our letters at the same time. With then Luca saying, guess that's not helping. With Ruby saying, no, it's not. With then Ruby raising her head up as you soon notice that's of Blake. As she's currently that's of reading all by herself. With then both Luger and Yang notice Blake. With then Yang saying, oh, you know her? With then Ruby saying, uh, no, but she was one of the people counting Alfin that actually helped me with Weiss, to be fair. With then Luger looking her, up, looking her out as he's saying, damn, she's actually quite nice. Especially that, I can't really say for sure, but I believe her, boot, her butt must be with then soon Yang basically giving Luger that of a death glare. With then Luger saying, okay, okay, I'll stop, I'll stop. With then Lu Yang saying, come on, why don't we go and introduce her? With then Luger was about to stand up, with then Yang saying, not you, you stay back, pervert. Saying, fair, fair. I'll be waiting here patiently while doing a little bit of window shopping as well, as going back to looking at many of the other girls. That, are, that that they're in in the room as well with then both ruby saying wait but yang wait with soon as for Bla as for blake she soon basically th while reading internally thinking that boy the boy with the silver hair and the armor i mean sure i had her only a few times when i got to see his face but can't be can it he, he's been loyal to the he's been loyal to the white fang ever since ever since i met him there's no way that he could be with then soon blake raises her head up as she soon hears y yang basically calling her uh, saying hello while dragging ruby along with then blake couldn't help but Take a take a that of a mental sigh, saying, ah, "Here we go." With then she's saying, "Can I help the two of you?" With then she's soon saying, "Oh, oh, you're that girl from this morning." With then she's saying, "Yeah, that's me. I'm Ruby, but you can also call me Germ." With soon realizing, "Okay, please don't call me that." With then. Blake couldn't help but sigh, saying, 
Blake. My name is Blake Belladonna. With then Yang saying, oh, that's a pretty cute name. Uh, I like your bow. With then it really suits you. With soon, Blake couldn't help but say, huh, thanks, I guess. With then she sent, with then also asking, so what are you reading? With then saying, a book. With I would like to read by myself. With soon Yang saying, yeah, this girl's a lost cause, Ruby. With then Ruby saying, what's it, re what's it about? With then Blake saying, pardon? Your book. What is, what's your what reading about? With then she's saying, it's the man with two souls. Basically a struggle of two souls in one body. One that, one of a man trying to live a normal life while the other is a man is that of a deranged monster, not afraid to hurt those in its own pursuit of why he is alive. With then Yang saying, that's quite depressing, actually. With then Ruby saying, it's actually quite interesting to me. Yang, Yang used to read me quite a bit of stories alongside our dad, especially stories of that of heroic heroes, after all. With then Blake can help but say, that's great and all, but... The world isn't as, well, glamorous as it is in a storybook, to be fair. With then soon, Ruby saying, well, that's why we're here. It's what we're all training to become hunts huntsmen and huntresses for. So we can make the world better, just like in the stories. With then, yeah, Blake couldn't help but say, you're quite, well, optimistic, I have to say. <laughs> I like that. With then soon, Ruby Yang could would say, "Oh, that's my baby sis for you, so sweet and impure to the very end." With then soon, Ruby getting annoyed and basically starting to roughhouse with her older sister, a couple a couple meters away, as it being from root from Weiss, as she's speaking with Luke, saying, "Oh." So that's the reason why you came here to, to Vale, saying, yeah, it's basically for me to start, to have a new start, a new, a new chance to make up for the mistakes I'd done back in Atlas, after all. So I'm tired. I'm sorry if I'm, if I disappointed you that I wasn't Ash to begin with when you found out that I was Luke. With then saying, no, no, it's okay. I absolutely get it. To be honest, it's the reason why I came to I came to Beacon instead of going to Atlas instead. I wanted to get away from Atlas. I wanted to get away from the very title that was given to me, the Snee Arist, after all, away, and away from my father's influence too. So I'm glad to be here. And I'm glad to know that there's somebody who knows me but doesn't know me as doesn't know me as a face instead of just me. With then, Luke couldn't help but smile, saying, I'm glad to be that first person. With soon, Weiss couldn't help but blush with seeing Luke smile. However, that moment basically fades with that of, well, Ruby and Yang basically roughhousing with each other. With then, Weiss getting annoyed at the, at the noise at the commotion and noise, saying, What is going on? With then Luke saying, <laughs> Probably just somebody roughhousing and pl playing around. We shouldn't have to worry about with then soon Weiss basically standing up from, from where she was and then heading to where the noise is. With then Luke basically sighing, saying, Ah, here we go. I should probably step in just in case. As the girls continue roughhousing, with then soon Luger showing up saying, <laughs> Seriously? I, 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 thought, I thought you guys were trying to talk to her. I didn't think that you guys would basically fight right in front of her. With then L Ruby basically holding on to Yang's leg. With Yang basically bouncing on one, on one foot. With Ruby basically saying, It's her fault. With then, yeah, with then Yang saying, "Hey, that is so not fair." 
with then Luke is saying, uh, you sisters never change, don't you? With then Weiss saying, what is going on over here? With then soon Ye Weiss and Yang scream out at the same time, oh, not you again. With Ruby basically saying, hey, girls, calm down. Everybody's trying to be, everybody's trying to stay quiet here. And some are tr also trying to sleep too. With then Weiss saying, oh, so now you're on my side. With then Ruby saying, I wasn't, I, w it, I wasn't on your side before. I was just with then Yang saying, hey, what's your problem with my sister? With then Weiss saying, she's a prop, she's a menace to my health. With then Luke saying, whoa, Weiss, that is totally uncalled for. I mean, you got, you just met her after all. With then Weiss saying, Luke, whose side are you on? With then Luke saying, I'm more on the side of trying to negotiate from and from things escalating right now. With then soon another voice saying, wow, at least somebody else actually has the same idea as me. With then they soon see this the silver haired boy. However, this time he doesn't have the what having the mask that covered his left eye that covered his left eye. With and basically having that of a sleep having that of pajama is that of well a uh, baggy pants and basically completely shirtless with then soon Blake noticed noticed Alfin within her eyes completely widened saying it's you are Alfin with then soon yet within Alfin noticing Blake as she's staring at him entirely while she also having out of a little bit of blush. However, Alfin doesn't notice. With then saying, uh, sorry, miss, can I help you? With then Blake saying, oh, sorry. I was trying to get some quiet buds. Then with saying, ah, oh, yeah, figures as much. With then saying, come on, come on, everybody. Try and calm down. After all, some people are trying to get some sleep. And if you guys have something to have something to argue with, try and do it tomorrow morning or at, before we start before we start the test after all. I would like to, I would like to get a good night's sleep at least. With then hearing this, soon everybody looking at each other, with then Weiss basically turning around, saying, Come on, Luke. With then Luke saying, Sorry about her. She's quite well with then Yang saying snobbish. Annoying, entitled, with saying, hi, strong, that's all. With then, she's within Luke walking off. As then Luke is saying, boy, I know Luke von Fabra. Dude is completely, totally off than what I thought he was. With then, Sue Ruby saying, who was he actually? With then Yang saying, yeah, never heard of the guy. With then soon, Al Alfin can help but speak up, saying, "Luke von Fabra. If I recall, the von Fabra family are actually quite of an influential family in Atlas. Orig you could say, or you could say they're actually the people who built the foundation of Atlas before, originally when it used to be called Mantle. To be fair, the reason being is that they were basically members of the of the original that." of the original ruling class of Mantle before it became Atlas and a dip when the count and before the council system was made. But even so, the Von Fabra family, out of all the families, survived the longest and actually adapted to the current age that we live in now. So to be honest, they're basically they're basically, well, Elysian royalty, even if they don't even on pa even if on paper they're not with then soon Yang saying damn so we're basically dealing with a with a prince here by any chance with then soon Ruby kind of say oh that's so cool with then Luger saying but I wouldn't get too close to Luke so like I said the reason that I see him is so different is because what I heard from at from those in Atlas, or especially from from my older brother, is that he's supposed to be a pompous, arrogant, and self-entitled brat that whines a lot 
and also blames other people for his own mistakes. However, he's completely different from what I, what I, what I completely heard. So to be honest, they might have just been rubers just to discredit the Von Fabra family. With then, Alfin can up and say, "Well, at least the Von Fabras are completely different from the Schnees. At least this." The Fabras actually treat their workers, especially their finest workers, with a lot more respect and a lot more better pay than what they were given before, to be honest. As for the Sneeze, <laughs> they do the complete and total opposite, especially their, especially the current, well, head of the, head of the Sneed Dust Company, Jock Snee. With then soon, everybody completely caught off guard with Alfin's coldness. With then saying, ah, well, I don't, I'm about to go to bed. I'll see you guys later, Ruby. See you. With then soon saying, oh, uh, see you, Alfin. With then soon, all the everyone else begins to walk off as Blake soon, well, blows out the candle on her side. As for everyone, as for Velvet. She couldn't help but be completely and utterly annoyed at the noise that was happening. As part of her basically wanted to go over there and basically shut everybody up as, as on her own. However, she realized that it's best to keep a low profile, at least for now, if she has to. Until she, was getting a until she gets the chance, the opportunity to kill that bastard who betrayed her. However, part of her couldn't help but internally laughing as every time when she saw John basically going to sleep in a onesie to her, she basically see it as the funniest thing in her life since for a while now. The other thing is that she couldn't help but have a little bit more respect for John to have to be brave enough to even sleep in a damn onesie, basically giving her the idea that he is basically a naive immature and basically unware child on how the real world works but also somewhat a bit well but still can't help but give the guy at least some respects in one regard at least in the naivety department with them soon the day the night finally comes to an end with everybody sleeping however let's just say it ends up being quite the energetic morning especially with a specific girl a girl that basically wears that of white and black and also having that of well red hair as she basically jumps around around that of a boy with that of black hair and a pink and a pink streak in his hair as well with that of green wearing that of green chinese clothing as well as she basically continues walking around him, speaking around him, talking constantly. As this being Nora Valkyrie and the person she's talking to is her childhood friend and partner, Lai Ren. As the two, as soon Nora finishes talking, within Ren saying, Nora? Within L Ren, Nora can help but say, yes, Ren? Within him putting up his weapon, being that of Stormflower into the sleeve of his clothing with then saying I don't think sloths can t can have as a as a call with then soon nor saying yeah but that's the best part they wouldn't expect it with then Ren couldn't help but snicker to himself for a bit before closing his locker saying come on Nora if then Nora saying yep and but not together together though with the two of them walking off and them passing that's of Ru of Ruby and Yang. Also, that's of Luger as well. With then soon Luger saying, what's with them? With then Yang saying, oh, who knows though. But uh, some things have changed. I mean, look at Ru. What about you, Rubes? You up to the test? And you seem a lot more confident after all from last night. With then Ruby saying, oh yeah, no more awkward small talk and no more getting annoyed. This time, I get to let my sweetheart do all the talking. As she begins to cradle and also begins to coo at her, well, crescent rose. As it's still in its, well, 
concealed form with then you, Luger saying, oh boy, I think her weapon obsession has gotten worse. I thought, I thought Crow, I thought you and Crow were going to try and keep that, keep that in check with then, with then Yank saying, I mean, we tried. Hell, even Dad tried too, but didn't really do so much, especially when she went overboard on, on her, on her weapon after all. With then soon Luger saying, how bad are we talking? With then Yank saying, she basically worked on it for literally five months. Five weeks straight, no sleep whatsoever. With then saying, "How now? I can understand now that actually makes sense why her growth seems a lot more stunted." With then Ruby soon noticing that both Kang and Luger are talking to each other, saying, "Huh? Did you have something? Did, were you guys talking about something?" With then Luke, but then both two the two of them saying, "Uh, nothing important." But also, Ruby. You do know that you're going to be on a team, right? I mean, you all, you're not the only one going through initiation in the entrance exam for this. Within Luger saying, she's right, Ruby. After all, you got to start meeting new people and also talk with them as well. With then Ruby groaning saying, ugh, the both of you sound like dad. Hell, the both of you almost sound like your parents after all. With then saying this, both Luger and Yang look at each other. Before then, both of them looking away, with then Luger saying, <laughs> like hell, with then Yang saying, definitely, no chance in hell that the two of us would actually get close, get close with each other, with, in that way, with then soon, Ruby saying, uh-huh, well, first of all, I will bring up that I don't... That what does talking to people actually mean to, of growing up? And secondly, I don't need to talk to people to grow up. After all, I drink milk. But then Luger having a sweat drop internally thinking, what does milk have to do with anything about growing up? Heck, it doesn't even help that much. Especially just strengthening your bones instead. With then Yang commenting, going to her little sister saying, but what are you going to do about teams though? Within Ruby basically, well, sho shoving at least a little bit, saying, well, I guess I'll just join your team, though. With then Yang, or possibly even Luger as well. Within the two of, e two of them look at each other again, with then soon Luger scratching the back of his head while putting one of his, uh, putting his left hand in his pocket. With then Yang basically saying, uh, maybe you should try and find your own team to be part of instead. With then Ruby getting somewhat sp suspicious, going up to her older sister saying, My dear sister Yang, are you and Luger saying that the two of you don't want to be on the same team as me? With then Luger saying, What? No. The only reason why I'm saying this is because, well, I don't mind being on the same team as you, Ruby. Definitely. It's just that... I feel like you really do need to start talking to people outside of your current friend group and branch out after all. I mean, make it, being a huntsman is about also making connections besides just having that, besides just beating up, well, grim and criminals after all. With then soon, Yang cut us out. Exactly. Couldn't say it any better myself, Luger. With Luger nodding. As he couldn't help but also blush at Yang's compliment towards him as well. With then soon Ruby saying, what? That's with then John Coat basically passing him saying, this is ridiculous. I mean, I know for sure I put my I put my sword and shield in the right locker. I know, I know for sure I did. I mean, I could have put it somewhere else, but there's no way. Uh, why is that to happen to me today? With then John passing everybody while basically wallowing in his own self, well, pain. With then soon Velvet seeing this and part of her couldn't help but say, how pathetic. With then grabbing her mechanized gauntlet blade known as Revengeful Seeker as she begins leaving the locker room. Before looking back, but then thinking, this is going, let's just hope that 
I don't waste my time with somebody who's going to get in my way. With then soon walking off as back in the locker room, Weiss and Luke are talking with a girl that was back in the orientation hall. As this girl being the five-time Mistral Junior Champion, Pira Mikos, with then soon Weiss couldn't help but comment saying, So, Pira, have you gotten any uh, any consideration on who you decided to join uh, on a team? I mean, as a strong and powerful individual that you are, plenty of people have been wondering if you would join their team or not. Am I right? With then Pira can up say, mm, I'm not completely sure yet, though. I would prefer as the chips to fall as they may. With then Luke commenting, saying, I do agree with Pira on this one, Weiss. I mean, you can't just force, well, people to join the same team. And besides, they also didn't even explain on how teams are going to be formed as well. With then Weiss looking at Luke, at Luke feeling somewhat betrayed before then soon hiding that hiding that betrayal for a split second saying well it well luke is right but even so if there was any chance i would prefer it. maybe if it was possible maybe the three of us can be part of the same team and find that of a worthy fourth member with then pierce saying that would be lovely actually with then weiss couldn't help but maniacally internally thinking this is great not only i would not only I would have Luke, who seems to be quite the capable fighter, given that he's here at B that he was able to apply and be part of Beacon as well, but I would also have one of the strongest, one of the strongest, strongest fighters of our current generation, Pyramikos. I would, we would be famous. We would be well respected. We would be the most popular team in throughout all of Beacon. We would rule the school with then soon. John coming up saying, but you know what else would be probably an honor? Teaming up with me, John Ark, at your service. With then soon, why saying, um, who are you? With then John saying, uh, hey, well. With then Luke saying, um, I believe you're Vomit Boy by any chance? I, I heard a lot of people calling you that when you vomit outside, when you, well, basically threw up when you came to Beacon with then Suit saying, Hey, with then Luke saying, Sorry, man, I just hear, I just heard what I heard from the rumors. With then soon Pierce saying, It's nice to meet you, John. My name is Pira saying, Oh, nice to meet you. But soon going back to Weiss saying, Well, uh, allow me to truly introduce myself. I'm John Ark. I'm a I'm considered to be a Pisces, actually. I'm also I also wanted to be a hero as a huntsman, and I'm planning on being one of the one of the top students here at Beacon. So, what did you say, Princess? Want to be a part of a team with me? With them hearing this, Luke couldn't help but think, "Wow, this guy is really trying to overcompensate." I can tell. The worst part is I can barely sense the guy's aura. To be honest. Did he not awaken it? Or rather, is it still locked? With then, Luke was about to comment on this before then, Pyrrha saying, actually, John, I believe the teams here, I think Huntsman teams are supposed to be composed of four, so with then, jo but then John saying, you don't say. Well, hot stuff, if you play your cards right, you can be a part of a team with me and Weiss. With then soon, Weiss saying, I'm also going to be part of a team with Luke as well. With then Luke saying, hey, what's up? With then Luke, John getting a good, better look at Luke, noticing his red, his red, his reddish hair, his bright blue eyes, his cut, his sweatsh, his cloak, his cloak jacket that basically cuts down in the middle to showing his abs. And basically show that he's kind of basically in his baggy, his baggy black pants and, and blue sneak and red sneakers with then internally thinking, damn it, this guy is so cool. And yet he doesn't even look like he tries that hard with then soon Luke saying, uh, 
can I help? Is everything okay, John? With then John saying, uh, yeah, actually. With then Weiss coming up saying, uh, John, do you know on, besides just me and Luke, do you know on who you're talking to when you speak to her? With John commenting saying, not in the slightest snow angel. With then Weiss saying, this is Pyramikos. She be, she's, she's not, she's considered to be one of the best, the best of our generation and due to her being the top of her class at Sanctum Academy in Mistral. With then John saying, I've never heard of it. With Weiss getting annoyed saying, uh, she's won the, re she's won the regional Mistral tournament five years in a row. With then John saying, uh, what? With then Weiss getting even more annoyed before then she could snap. What Luke can up and say, she's on the box of every Pumpkin Pete's marshmallow cereal box, dude. With then soon, what John is saying, oh, really? You're on the box as well? I mean, they only they only reserve that for that of celebrities, actually. With then Pira getting somewhat, well, actually happy and somewhat actually thankful as well given that John doesn't really see, doesn't really know Pira that much and, all, and just sees her as a girl, more like that of a surprise, not even knowing who she truly is, with her can help but actually begin blushing at John's, well, naivety and not knowing her actually, with then Pira can say, yeah, well, it was pretty cool, too bad, it is a shame that the cereal isn't really healthy for you though, with then Luke saying, eh, tell that to basically, hunt, tell that to the hundreds of kids all across Remnant that eat the stuff constantly. And some teenagers too. With then Weiss also speaking up saying, so, and so answer yourself this. Do you really think that you have any right to be part of her team now? With then soon John lowering his head saying, I guess not. With then Pira walking up to John saying, actually, John, I would think that you would make a great leader. With then John perking up a little bit more saying, oh, stop. With then Weiss commenting saying, yes, please stop. You're only en encouraging him is not a good thing. With then soon y John saying, well, looks like Pira is on door with Team John. His thoughts are pretty filling up and quick. So what did you say, Snow Angel? Maybe I could probably ask the teachers to pull some strings. You could be part of the John train after all. With then Weiss saying, uh, that's a little bit close. With then, uh, can somebody, with then Luke grabbing John by his sweatshirt under his armor, saying, John, please, can I ask you to back it up a little bit? It's a good thing to have confidence. It's another thing to get into a woman, into a woman's personal space without permission. So, you think you could dial it back a little bit? With then soon, John basically holding his hands up, saying, "Oh, yeah, right. Sorry, sorry. I didn't mean to." With then soon, Luke letting him go. With then saying, ah, "Sorry about that. That's the old me being." I was being, I was really being too pushy there. Any rate, I better get going. Come on, Weiss. With then Weiss caught off guard by the work, by Luke's, well, actions, but also seeing that they were rough, but also a bit more responsible and that's of, and noble as well. With her blushing a bit saying, uh, right. Uh, Pira, will you saying, oh, sure. Good luck, John. I uh, hope see, hope that we can be on the same team, though. With then John basically slumping down on the ground, especially knowing that Luke is shorter than him, and yet he was able to pin him so easily. With John feeling depressed and sad, but saying, ah, "My mom told me that got that girls like a guy with confidence. What did I go wrong?" With then soon. Luger can help but say, probably calling her Snowflake. I mean, you probably, I mean, sure, it would have been okay, but you should have did it as more of a joke instead of a pickup line, dude. Within Yang saying, really? You're giving dating advice? 
Mr. Pervert with saying, hey, I may be a pervert, but I can at least try and control it. With then soon Luger helping up John with alongside Ruby saying, come on, Miss, come on, Mr. Player. With that, they soon walk, walk off. During this time, John, Alfin also begins walk begins walking to the area where they where the test exam is supposed to take place. With then walking alongside him is that of Blake. With then Blake continues looking at Alfin, with the, uh, while also continue walking forward. With then, Al, but then Alfin can up and say, "Okay, I'll bite." Care to explain why you, why you keep on looking at me? With then saying, "It's well, tell me, are you, Alfin, are you aware of the White Fang actually?" With then soon, Alfin basically tenses up for a bit, saying, "How the hell does she know? Does she know that I'm a member?" With then saying, "Uh, yeah, of course I am. The rattleless group that they are. I mean." They are just that of Faunus and some of humans who basically attack, who basically attack those who discriminate against Faunus. It's it's naive, but some of them are naive. But some of them do do this for the good of the good of the Faunus kind, for the rights that they deserve. After all, with then soon, Blake saying, actually, that's a thing. I, my name actually, my name is. Not just Blake, it's Blake Belladonna. With Finn saying, Blake Belladonna. With soon looking looking Blake down from top to bottom. With soon saying, oh my god, I am a fucking idiot. Blake? Is that really you? How the hell did I... Well, I did grow up after all. and I w- And I'm no longer the same little girl I used to be. So there's that, and it has been 10 years since we last seen each other, too, when we separated from one another, except during that one time uh, when we did that of a joint, a joint mission with the White Fang between that of the, ve- the Veil and Mistral branches, with then soon saying, oh crap, I remember that. Ugh, I was too busy trying to avoid dealing with Adam that I didn't bother speaking with many of the members from the from the Veil vale branch of what the White Fang. So you were actually part of that branch. What are you doing here? With then, Blake couldn't help but look down, saying, "I, I defected from the White Fang." With then, Alfin basically opened his eyes wide, saying, "You, you defected? But you're literally the daughter of the founding member of the White Fang." You, both your parents found, basically built this, or built the organization from the very beginning. Why would you? I was done, Elfin. I was done with everything. Done with the attacks. Done with the attempted murders. Done with all of it. I was also done with Adam. With then hearing this, Elfin was completely caught off guard saying, You were done with Adam? Saying, I admired him. I looked up to him. Hell, I even loved him, actually. With then hearing this, saying, oh, really? With then saying, yeah. But after everything that is, ha- after everything he has done here at Vale, all the attacks and everything he did, I just can't. I just can't keep condoning his actions and just continue to try and justify them. So I ran. I left the White Fang. So and then I took the ve- after a couple months or so, I took the Veil the Veil entrance exam, took on their took on their test and basically I'm here. I'm with then Sink. Wow, just I didn't expect that. With Sink at then Sink, but I didn't expect to see the legendary Iron Mask here at ve- here at Veil 2. With then Alfin scratching the back of his head, saying, Yeah, I figured that. Why are you here, Alfin? If I recall, you were just as loyal to the White Fang as anybody, especially being a human at all. So why? 
It's a Favor from Sienna with Vin Sue. Uh, Blake saying, A favor? <sighs> Sienna wanted me out of the White Fang, but and basically wanted me to start a new life outside of it. Even though I was literally born into the White Fang, to be honest. Just like you. With Vin. Out. Within. Sienna saying, Alfin. Saying, Listen, I'm only doing this is because it was just to honor her deal. Honor her decision. Honor the in respect and in, in respect for her. That's it. I don't. I really don't res I have no respect for hunters or huntsmen or huntresses whatsoever. They basically there are no better they're no better than the humans who continue to persecute and look down on Faunus when they haven't done anything against the discrimination that they do. It kinda pisses me off to be honest. But even so, I'm still here and I'm still going to respect Sienna's wishes for me, and that's what I'm going to do. With that, soon, Blake can say, you really do respect her a lot, saying, of course I do. She's basically the closest thing to a mother I ever had. With then, soon, Blake saying, you never change. Not e even after these 10 years. You always respect other people's wishes and, and those who you respect the most. Saying, <laughs> am I really that... Have I really not changed that much? With then, she's saying, nope, not one bit. With then, the two couldn't help but walk side by side. With the two now noticing on who they who they truly are together now. With that, they soon arrive. Everyone soon now arrives at the train at where they'll be. With then, Professor Ospin alongside Professor Glinda as well. With then Ospin giving his speeches, saying, For years, you all have been training hard to become warriors. So, today, your abilities will now be evaluated here at the Emerald Forest. With then Glinda speaking up, saying, Now, I know many of you have basically been wondering of the rumors about t how, how teams are formed. So, allow us to put an end to the confusion and the rumors that you might have heard. Within she quieting down for dramatic pause, saying, You will be giving your teammates today. Hearing this, Ruby couldn't help but whine at least a little bit quietly to herself, with then Ospin speaking up. These teammates will be by your side here at Beacon for your entire time here. So personally, it would be in your best interest to pair up with somebody that you can tolerate or that you can get along with pretty well. Once again, Ruby whines, with Velvet noticing this, realizing that girl is way too young for her own good. Why the hell is she even here? With then Ospin speaking, I'm saying, so therefore, the first person that you make contact with once you land into the forest will be your partner and teammate for the next four years here at Beacon. With then hearing this, Ruby's entire world has now shattered but then she's screaming out, what? With Nora and Ren basically talking with each other with Ren saying, with Nora saying, I told you, once you partner up, make it way to the northern end of the forest. You will meet opposition on the way there. I will let you know this now. You need to make sure to destroy everything in your path, even if it has to be the very trees of the forest itself, because if you don't, you will die. With then John basically gulping, with then soon Luger can up say, Creatures of Grimm, of course, no surprise there, but doubtful that they actually would let us die. Yeah, I mean, this may be a Huntsman Academy, but even so, they still, they still can't just let a bunch of kids die on the very first day. With then Osman saying, You'll be monitored and graded throughout the entirety of this test and exam. So, so I'll lend you this now. None of our instructors and professors here will intervene in this test. With then hearing this, Luger's eyes basically widened saying, wait, say what? With then Yang looking at the white and black haired boy saying, you seem surprised, but saying, of course I'm surprised. 
I thought this is, a, this is an exam for new beginners. People starting out to become huntsmen and huntresses. This is, some, this is the kind of test that you would basically send that of send that of people who are trying to become apprentices to huntsmen. Not act not to actual not actual newbies with then Yang saying, oh uh well <laughs> this actually makes it more of an interesting makes things more interesting. Saying, Yang, this is serious. Saying, oh lighten up. Things are just gonna get more interesting, that's all Luger. So just have some fun, right, Lugs? With the inheritance, Luger can help but sigh, saying, "Ah, this is what I expect from the danger, from that of the thrill-seeking danger junkie." But then Ozpin commenting, saying, "Each, re you'll be reaching that of an abandoned temple. This temple will hold that of relics. Each of each team must make sure to bring at least one relic and bring it back up to here to the cliff. You must guard that relic." And also your standing as well will also be grading you on how well you do during this exam. But then Ospin asking, uh, sir, I have a question within Ospin ignoring John saying, good, now take positions. Within everybody taking a certain position th on, on that of a launch pad with then soon. Some of them couldn't help but laugh at John being ignored with then... Velvet can help but say, uh, he's going to get himself killed. Well, at least that's one less loose end for somebody ratting me out. With then each of them being launched up into the air. However, John continues trying to ask questions on how they're going to be go going to the Emerald Forest. With then Ospin answering each and every one of John's questions. That he'll be landing. That they'll be falling, but they have to create their own landing strategy. With each, with again, one by one, each of them being launched in the air, with then John saying, so what kind of landing strategy will be before being launched into the air in mid-question. Mid, mid with soon, looking up, Ospin basically drunk his coffee, with then thinking, ah, well, I wonder how this year is going to do with it, with soon. Each and every one of them having their own same landing strategy that they had at in in that of fir in the first volume. However, dip for our for our new characters though, Velvet uses her semblance, her demon arm, and clung to a wall into a tree. As soon she begins to slide down that tree while breaking ton while breaking branches in the process, slowing her descent as well. As for Lu as for Luger, he suit he basically uses his twin his two his twin pistols, being the spurious pist being the spurious pistols, and in and infuse them with that of air of that of wind and gravity dust. His left pistol having that of gra of that of gravity dust, holding basically s shooting a bullet that actually pulls him down to the ground. Before using that of the one with that of wind dust to pu to push him forward, as he soon lands, begins to break his fall by landing on a couple of branches on each tree, while then soon switching his guns to his spurious swords, and then stabbing the blades into the trees, sliding down each and every one as well, landing on the landing on the ground. As for Alfin. He soon brings out a couple of dust crystals, being that of a wind, that of a wind dust crystal. With within the dust crystals, soon began to part piece by piece together together. As then, Alfin basically swings the dust sword all cr across the air, as he soon cuts through many trees before soon landing down. Switch, switching to hit, switching to sin, the sin cleaver once again, stabbing his sword into a tree before then soon jumping off that tree. As for Luke, he just continues falling and falling and falling before then soon his aura begins to expand across his body. As then, once he lands down, he shows like that of a giant, that of a giant force field of his aura. Covering, hit, covering him in that of a dome energy field. Within, the blue light begins to fade and 
disappear. As then getting out of the crater, Luke soon enters the forest. With that, soon everybody is now arrived in the Emerald Forest and the test now begins. And that's it. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please tell me what you guys think in the comments below. Love to read them what you guys have to say. And like I said, I won't be doing this what this well fanfic as much as other as my other ones on this channel. And I still but I still want to continue it even even so. So yeah. Any rate. As for Ruby, I still don't know on who who should I ship her with. I mean, I pl probably should still ship her with uh, with Oscar to be honest. I still think they're pretty cute together, it, even if they don't probably get together in the show. So whatever. But even so, I might. But if I do add any other more Tales of characters, I might ship them with her. Just tell me guys in the comments below when I once I add new characters. So with all that said. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that bell notification to give it a day in my videos. Also check out my Discord, gaming channel, main channel, and Patreon. Possibly all link in the description below if I'm not too lazy. So, with all that said, this is Yamuki signing out. Later, you guys, and take care.